We're back. I want to talk to you. I know that, that you had mentioned the uh, Discovery Center has already like over 2,000 uh, historical photos, but you guys are now working with the Pioneer Association and they've got like over 9,000 and you're scanning, cataloging, yes. pre digitally preserving these images. That's right. got it. That's huge. It's a huge project and we're really excited to be involved in it. The Wasco County Pioneer Association started putting together um, picture boards uh, back in the 20s or 30s and these are, you know, large boards where they were, they were actually adhering the photographs to the board so that they could put them out on display. And there are hundreds of these boards and 9,000 images on them. And, you know, at the time, nobody really realized that gluing them to the boards was not the best thing for them. And a lot of that glue can't be removed. So we started working with um, Oregon Heritage Commission and OSU libraries to, uh, to develop a project to get high resolution scans of all of the images, thereby preserving them in perpetuity. Right. So, so we started working on this project and uh, probably uh, around the first of the year we started doing the scans. We, we've got 8,000 scans now. And the best thing about this project is that um, the images are going to be available through the OSU library system so anyone can access them. Okay. Yeah. So, so can they be used um, like in publications and stuff for a fee or something? For a fee, yes. Uh -huh. The, the um, Wasco County Pioneer Association still owns all the images okay. and so anyone wanting to use them will have to get permission and you know the, the ones that are available online will have a watermark on them so you have to actually work through the Discovery Center and the Pioneer Association to get those images but but for researchers, they will be available so that people will, will be able to see that collection finally. And it's just, it is a phenomenal collection. Yeah. The um, Orient Historical Society uh, told us that it is the best community photo collection in the state. Really? Yeah, so it's, it's, cool. it's a fun project yeah, to be involved yeah. in. Yeah, well kudos to you guys for that. That's awesome. Thanks. You guys also have a lot of native plants mm -hmm. all around the the Discovery Center. Yes. And that's and some of it almost looks like, oh well don't they care about what's going on over there? <laughs> the <laughs> but neat, it, yeah. yeah, it looks a little too natural. Right. But that's all very intentional. It and is. to explain that, that. That site where the Discovery Center is was actually a cement plant. And so the whole thing was reclaimed. And when the Discovery Center first opened 13 years ago, the grounds were just, there was nothing there. And um, the plan was to create a natural garden, all with native plants, so that people could see what the gorge used to look like um, before it was used for farming and, and other things. And so it has taken 13 years of a lot of hard work to get those plants established. Some of the native plants, you, you get them established and they literally just look like a scraggly little weed for about five <laughs> years before they bloom and you okay. can see how beautiful they are. But in the spring and early summer, it's, we have 90 blooming species on our grounds. And, and what we hope to do is inspire other people to use this kind of landscaping, which is, you know, con conserves soil and water mm -hmm. and um, very easy care because you don't have to water it at all. It's just um, what, you know, what the gorge naturally provides, yeah. sustains them. So, yeah. Well, very ambitious, obviously, but what are some of the unique challenges that you, that you guys have faced along that? 13 years. Yeah, um, we have a, um, Barbara Robinson is a, a botanist and she um, completely uh, volunteers her time to run that project. She spends an amazing amount of time out there pulling weeds and identifying plants and making sure that, you know, seeds are collected in a timely manner so they can be replanted the next year. And she oversees um, anyone that helps on the ground. So we have volunteers that come in and we have some staff people that work out there and anyone who gets involved in that project learns so much from Barbara because she's just a natural born teacher and she's so enthusiastic about the project. So, cool. Yeah. And it yeah. was Barbara? Barbara Robinson. Barbara Robinson. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, um, what is the future, do you think, of the Discovery Center? I mean, over 13 years, you guys have obviously learned a lot. We have. And probably has, it's probably initiated a lot of discussion about the future. So right. what does that look like? Well, I think that one of the things um, that was maybe a little short-sighted in the beginning is that our exhibit areas were designed to be permanent exhibits. Mm. And so, so what happens is that people come once and then they don't come again. And so what we've been trying to do over time is 
um, further develop the themes, uh, change things out periodically, just to keep that educational um, component going. And keep um, locals coming and back, And keep too. locals coming yeah. back with, with pro the programming, the educational programming, and rotating exhibits. So um, we, we work on that, usually through grant funding. Our operation and maintenance is uh, sustained through our earned income from renting the facility. We do weddings and big events out there. We have catering facility. We have a store. Um, we have a membership program. Uh, we charge an admission at the door. So all of those revenue streams come together to piece together our budget each year. But for rotating new exhibits in and for our educational programming, um, by and large, we seek grant funds for that. So, okay. yeah. And I can only imagine that's got to be very expensive to have exhibits that you're that are transitioning in. And it out. is, yes. So, yeah. so volunteers probably are are very welcome. Yes, they're, yeah, they're key. We have over forty volunteers, and volunteers are involved um, with our curation facility, working on the collections, um, cataloging that sort of thing. Also with exhibit development, working with the Raptors. We have quite a few now involved with that. Um, they have That's, to go through. That, that'd be fun. It is fun, but they have to go through a little bit of an initiation period, which is mostly cleaning and the unsavory task of cutting up their food each day. Ah, <laughs> so it's almost like a hazing. But, uh, yes, yes, <laughs> but if they make it through that, then we, we initiate them into actually um, doing the education programs and, and handling the birds. So, okay. yeah. Well, very cool. Yeah. So say somebody watching this goes, hey, I want to do that. You know, I want to get involved. Yeah. What's the best way for them to go about that? Just call and, and make an appointment to come out and see us. And uh, we'll, we'll sit down and see what their interests are and, and find a niche for them. And get them put to work. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, Carolyn, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on the show and Thanks for having letting me. us and our viewers know more about the Columbia Gorge Discovery Center. So uh, it was a pleasure meeting you and talking. So, you guys, thanks again for joining us, and I look forward to seeing you again next time on Local Light. John Compton here saying thanks again for watching. And remember, if you've got a guest idea, let us know. Just visit localite.com.